This is Google's Pixel 3 XL phone. It's only been out for a few days and I'm trying to figure out whether it's worth the money because it costs a thousand euro. I'm also going to compare it to Huawei's P20 Pro and the iPhone XS Max. Now this is going to be a fairly short video because these are just my first impressions but I want to get one thing off my mind to start with. One physical design issue and it's this thing here. It's, it's the notch and I'm just wondering why Google has put a notch onto the Pixel 3 XL. It's not on the smaller Pixel 3. So this is a 6.3 inch device. The Pixel, the smaller Pixel is 5.5 inches. And in the case of the iPhone 10, for example, that notch is there for facial recognition. There's all sorts of infrared sensors and other stuff like that. Here, it's just two different camera lenses and a speaker. And you would have to ask yourself the question, is it worth it to disrupt the screen or is it just trendy to have a notch on your phone? Maybe it is. I and mean, we're all sort of used to notches on our phones now. Um, Huawei flagship phones have them, but I do wonder whether uh, it is worth it. Now, just to be clear, the second camera, front facing camera on this is a wide angle camera. So it has two cameras. One is very wide and I'll post some photos up at the end of this review so you can see what I'm talking about. And that does let a lot of selfie uh, extra um, stuff into your selfie shot or your self video. And that is quite useful, it's particularly useful if you want to make a video with yourself in it. So is that worth putting this big notch here? Because you didn't have to have uh, that notch here otherwise. It is that it's not used for things like facial recognition. So that's just right off the bat. Now, otherwise, from a design point of view, this is actually very nice. It's not spectacular, it's not gonna wow you, but one of the things that is nice about it, if you look at the back here, this is actually glass, but it's nice and smooth and it's kind of like a matte finish. And it is not slippy and it's pretty finger fingerprint proof. And over time, you really kind of get to like this. Also, I have to give Google kudos. This is one of the most, for a device that has such a shiny gloss screen, you can see it glistening there, this is almost fingerprint proof. It's probably the most fingerprint resistant phone um, I've ever used. So kudos to Google for that. Now I did mention the screen and it's a 6.3 inch OLED screen. It is very impressive. Is it better than the screen on the iPhone XS or Huawei P20 Pro or even the Samsung 9 Plus or the, uh, the Samsung Note 9? Um, it's too early to tell, not straight off the bat when you're using it, it's not, but it is a very, very uh, nice screen. Um, it is goes almost all the way down to the bottom, it has this little chin here, this little chin bezel, um, which uh, sets it apart from, certainly from the iPhone. It's nice and slim, it's nice. It's pretty light to use as well. There, there are custom cases for it as well. I did get a, an accessory case uh, with uh, this review unit. So uh, design-wise, it's pretty nice. Now I want to talk about the camera, the rear camera, and I did say camera, not cameras, because as you can see there, it only has one rear camera. And I'm kind of scratching my head as to why Google has done this. Now, in the past, this is the third Pixel uh, phone. There, there were two Pixel uh, Pixels before this, and each of them were known. The, the, the camera is actually a selling point uh, for the phone. It's supposed to be a fantastic camera. So far, it's a really good camera. I mean, I, I've, I brought it out the last couple of days. I've tested it in low light. It, it is a really good camera, but there's only one of them. There's only one camera. Now it's a wide angle uh, camera. On almost every other flagship phone you get now, there are two cameras. Samsung has just released a mid to high end phone, the A9, which has four cameras on it. Uh, Huawei's P20 Pro has three cameras on it and they're there for a reason. Now. It's probable that most people, this won't bother most people too much, but if you're in any way um, interested in photography, if you lean on your phone an awful lot for photos and for video, this will bother you. It does actually bother me. It's definitely a drawback to this phone because as good as this camera is, and it is an excellent camera and it's loaded with artificial intelligence, Google is making really, really good use of the, the power under the hood to uh, to basically deliver you much better photos than you would have any right to expect from a lens as small as this. While that's all brilliant, the second camera lens on these phones, like the iPhone X or, or Samsung or what, they're there for a reason. And the second camera is a telephoto lens. It's, so when you want to photograph something that's far off, typically, with a one camera 
phone, what you do is you end up pinching out on the screen to, uh, to try and get that object into focus. But what you're really doing is you're just stretching uh, you're stretching the image. So if you keep stretching, you start to look pixelated and blurry. It's really not that great. So the, the reason the second camera is there is it's at a fixed focal length, fixed telephoto focal length. So when you um, photograph something that's a little bit further away, you want to zoom in on something, you're getting much more resolution, much more information in the picture. It's really handy. Um, it's also really handy for video, particularly um, now that the second telephoto lens is frequently stabilized on the top phones, on the iPhone and the Samsung, certainly. So I'm kind of scratching my head as to why Google has done this with the Pixel. I'm pretty sure that the next Pixel phone will have a second camera, or it should have anyway. But um, this will definitely go back down as a drawback for me that it only has one camera. Now I said this was going to be a short video and it is, I'm, I'm wrapping up yeah, already. The battery life on this is decent but not outstanding. It's about the same as an iPhone. That's not brilliant. It, it's good. It's, it'll be good enough to get you through a full day if you don't use it too much, but it won't definitely match the likes of the Huawei P20 Pro. It won't latch e match even some uh, mid-range handsets like, uh, uh, like one or two from Nokia that now have uh, 4,000 uh, milliamp batteries. This is a 3,400 milliamp battery in it. It's a big screen. It does a lot of things. If you use the camera, if you use it to, to watch a lot of video, which a lot of people will, um, you are going to run out of battery at about five or six o'clock every day. Um, that said, it's not worse than some of the other flagships out there, so it's fine. Now, as I said, I have the Pixel 3 XL. There is a smaller uh, Pixel 3 that's also being released at the same time. The pricing for this, the pricing for this phone is for the 64 gigabyte version, which I have right here, is 999 euro. So that's quite a whack. That puts it on par or more expensive than some of its rivals, although nowhere near as expensive as, for example, the iPhone XS Max. Um, but it is a kind of a pricey phone. The smaller Pixel 3, the five and a half inch model, starts at 899 for 64 gigabytes. If you want to go up um, to 128 gigabytes, the Pixel 3 XL costs, uh, I think it's 1100, 1099. So that's it for my first impressions for this phone. They're mixed. There are some great positives there. It's, it's a good phone. Um, uh, it has, I didn't talk about the audio, for example. There's fantastic audio uh, out of this. The camera is very good on it, but I am disappointed that it doesn't have uh, that second camera. Um, would this be your next phone over uh, Huawei P20 Pro, over a Samsung S9 Plus, over an iPhone XS Max or an iPhone XR, which is being released in a couple of weeks? Um, it's really too early to tell. I'll have a more complete review uh, on this, but for now, my first impressions are seven to eight out of 10.